Hi, would you like to help out with KDE but are not sure where to start? Well, with this video I want to give you some suggestions on how to join in. And the first one is try to join in a develop development chat. Because even if you don't like post your RDS day one, you can still read all the messages and that's gonna give you a very good idea of KDE works. Myself, I've been on a KDE uh, visual design chat for five months before actually doing anything with KDE, just trying to understand how KDE worked. And that's going to be so helpful. If you got some technical expertise, the more technical rooms are going to be helpful too, but for the beginners, the visual design room is a great place to start because even though sometimes, of course, we're talking about code and complicated stuff, most of the time it's also design and high consent. You can feel like at home, even with those, we won't scare you with hundreds of technical informations. And even if you join in and are not sure how, how to contribute, well, there's no need to in the first months. You can just understand how it works. And I would actually suggest not to join a development chat to uh, share your ideas and mockups day one. Because most of the times, if you don't know exactly, maybe not exactly, but roughly how KDE works, they might be out of place or they might be lacking some elements. So most of the times when someone joins in and proposes an idea day one, we have to shoot it down because maybe they don't quite know KDE and it goes how it goes. So again, join a development chat. How do you do that? Well, uh, there are two ways. The first one is using Matrix and the second one, Telegram. I will show you how to do the Matrix one first. And to do that, you go to webchat.kdi.org and you make an account. You might need, I honestly don't remember this and cannot check right now, uh, to create a KDE identity first. If so, you just like search for, uh, it's either mykdi.kdi.org or identity.kdi.org. They just changed, please forgive me, but uh, it's one of the two. And when you create an identity there, you can then join here or you can just create, I think, an account directly on webchat.kde.org. Anyway, I'll trust you on actually making an account for Matrix. When you do that and you log in, you can uh, access to this nice interface and you can explore rooms. You can just uh, go through them, but also search them. As an example, I was mentioning the visual design group and you can easily join it. It's this one, but you can also do this to, through uh, Telegram. And if you want to do that, there's this nice page in the KDE Community Wiki that tells you how to install Telegram, just in case, but also all of the channels, groups that there are out there. As an example, the, channel, the channels, we have the Sys Admins News, Planet KDE, and as far as groups goes, there's the KDE Plasma, KDE Sock, but also some more the visual design ones, so the main one, the breeze icons room, the Kurigami room, and so on. There is also the promotion page, which um, is not a page, sorry, is a group. And that one is also very nice because, again, making promotion doesn't require technical uh, expertise. And many, many times we do have in the promo group, uh, let's say beginner tasks that you can just help out with. So that's another good place to check out. When you've found like, your channel, try to understand what do you want to help in. If you want to help with a certain uh, application, there might be a channel about that one. Like as an example, if you want to help out with KD Connect, then try to join the KD Connect group. And uh, most of the times, the Telegram groups and the Matrix ones are uh, breached. So it shouldn't make a big difference which one you choose. Uh, we usually suggest uh, Matrix, but it's your pick. Then if you go to the main KDE.org website, there is this very nice page, Get Involved. And it's actually really nice. And if you haven't went through it, I would suggest you because there are so many ways to contribute. Let me just read them here. You can 
report issues, bug triaging, which is actually really important. And I admit I should do more than that. Then there's, of course, development, but also translation, visual design, documentation, user support, promotion, and so on. There's lots of stuff. And for all of these things, you can still get uh, a dedicated page for like each one of them on actually how to, let's say development, which is, I think the most common one, even though I do suggest checking out bug triaging and um, visual design and promotion and maybe documentation, but um, that may be a bit more difficult. And, but still development, there's an entire page on how to get involved regarding development. And it's not a short one. And it mostly guides you through how to make your development um, environment. I've received many questions like, do I need to do like a separate environment or like a virtual machine or a separate operating system on my disk? And I honestly think there's no need to do that because if you use like the suggested way in this page, KDE source build, it makes, I think, a separate environment by default, so all of the binaries binaries go into slash sorry home slash kd slash user slash stuff binaries. So I don't think that's needed. You can start right away, and you can follow the guide. It will tell you how to install basic tools, configure Git, everything that you might need. I followed this setup when I joined KD and. It was really nice. I'll admit that, and this is my suggestion here, don't be scared. Like this is going to be scary. It's not going to, <laughs> probably it's not going to build first try. It's going to give you some uh, errors, CMake errors, stuff like that. And I personally found it to be a bit scary because all my life I was like a Python guy and I just hit Python that file and everything worked. In this case, you need to install dependencies. And even though the KDE ones are um, actually managed through KDE source build, and there is somewhere here, I don't remember exactly where, a very long list of um, packages to install. Sorry, I just can't find it. Well, uh, there might be some missing package. And if so, you will see an error which will be like, see this log file for more information. So you go there, open the log file and see what's actually missing. Most of the time it's like, this required package is missing. And then it gives you the name. So you take the name of that and you put it to Google as an example. That's how I do that. <laughs> anyway, you put that into Google with your like distribution and try to understand in which package does that thingy uh, CMIC module, I think, is provided. And if you just cannot figure what the hell is going on, try to join the general development KD chat, um, which should be like just dev KD dev something. And you try to post the, you don't try, you do that. You post the error there and you ask for help. I do that myself quite often and people probably will get annoyed at you, just like they get annoyed at me, but most of the time you'll get very nice and helpful help, which is very nice. Uh, if you don't manage to build something for a while, then just try to, again, not try, do that. Write to me and I will try to help you as best as I can. Again, um, nowadays I can build, uh, I think most of the stuff of KDE, if not everything, but I know it's quite a scary thing, so if you need help, just ask. Do set up your development environment, even if you're doing like design-related tasks, in my opinion, because even if you're doing design, it's very nice to look at the QML code of how everything works. A QML is quite simple uh, in the like very in the larger field of programming languages. You can just look at it and see that it's not very scary. It takes a bit to like uh, adapt to it, but even if you're a designer, it's a helpful skill to have. Now, finally, the last thing is uh, how to check out the KDE source code. 
and all of the source code of KDE, as far as I know, is on invent.kde.org, which is our GitLab, our GitLab instance. So you see all of the projects, you can also search them in the search bar, which is covered by my face, hello. And if you pick one of the projects, you can see that it has uh, well, everything that you'd expect from a repository, so all the files, the commits. There's also merge requests where we actually keep, you know, the code that we're changing. Most of the times, it, everything that changes goes through a merge request, and if you want to contribute to KDE, then your end goal is to make a merge request. And a merge request is like, a person asking, hey, can I make this change? And everybody says no, or maybe yes, who knows? And there's also issues in GitLab, however, for actual bugs, most of, like, not most of, all of the times, uh, there's still Bugzilla. And if you don't know what Bugzilla is, is the one at bugs.kd.org, which contains all of the bugs of KD. We don't use yet maybe uh, GitLab for actually tracking bugs. We do use it somewhere to track, track discussions and it's not very clear if you, we, we should use this one or the old Fabricator instance. If you don't know what Fabricator is, don't worry. And um, it's what we used before GitLab to actually make code changes, like as an example, I have this code change, which is in to do, and it's from 2020. And he near proposed to make the transparency more transparent. We actually ended up implementing this, but in GitLab, which is what you should worry about. So that was all. If you still don't quite know, uh, um, again, if you follow all the tips, but still don't know to, where to start for the very first thing, Keep in mind, it's always going to be a very small detail. As an example, I remember that after following the KDE visual, the develop, visual development chat, visual design chat after five months, my only contribution or attempt to contribute was in a discussion regarding the icon to switch users in the login screen. And I suggested a potential design and it was actually discussed and then it was, um, refused for a better design. And that was actually really nice. And I felt like my idea, even though it wasn't accepted, accepted, was actually discussed and I liked it. It was super small, like it was just an icon that didn't quite, um, you don't even remember, like, let's be honest, you don't even remember what icon I'm talking about right now, but it was nice to actually try to contribute. And if you still don't know that tomorrow, or actually this evening, I'm going to make a video with an example on how to contribute a very small thing, which is going to be in the system settings, how to make sure that if you search for something, the correct uh, system setting module, which is the section comes up. So I'm going to talk about that and guide you through how you make an example patch to add a very small detail. So to wrap this up, again, check the visual development chat, which is very broad and I th rather simple um, to actually read. Again, do not try to make contribution to the chat from day one. As an example, this is the latest from the visual development chat. There's a trash icon. We're discussing this trash icon. And again, you might be tempted to say like, I like this or I don't like this. But the discussion is more like, does this fit the breeze design that we currently have? Should it fit it? Is it fine if it doesn't? Stuff like that. So try to understand what we're, what we're what's our attitude in those chats. Then go into the get involved page read through all of it, see if there's anything that interests you. Even if it's more than one thing, go read the cor corresponding page. As an example, this is the one for documentation. Go actually give a look to the code, make your local environment with, try to build like Dolphin as an example, just to see that you can do this. And if you cannot, then try again, why do I say try? Write in the, 
development chat or to me directly, I'm always skin 12. And if you still don't know something 12, well, see my next video regarding, um, you know, the system settings and how to improve it. And that was pretty much everything. There's a lot of new Patreons and I'm so happy about that. My last video like exploded, super happy. And I hope you like this one. So thank you to all of the people there. See you next time.